Next on BYUSN, the Cougars play their final road game of the season at number six, Iowa State tonight. What's the roadmap to another top 10 road upset? And would a victory tonight be better than the win at Kansas? We'll ask BYU radio analyst Mark Durant and preview tonight's big time showdown. How many three pointers does BYU have to make to pull off another huge upset? Lauren Gustin gets her vengeance in the Big 12 awards, thankfully. Big 12 champion swimmers Jordan Tiffany and Brad Prolo are in the house. Prolo! And which former Cougar coach got some San Diego State people in a huff last night? It's always good to have San Diego State fans in a huff. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, everyone. Presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. I am Spencer Linton alongside a man who is now doubling down on becoming a girl dad, Jerem Jordan. Congratulations! Thanks, man. It's a girl! Number three's on the way, uh, you know, July. So uh, ho hoping hoping we can figure out football media days. You know what, we got uh, bigger fish to fry here. But yeah, Venna and Tate are stoked. Uh, both wanted a boy. Okay. So, uh, oh, really? Venna wanted another Venna little wanted brother? Venna wanted another little brother. Basically, someone that could... Uh, Tate could uh, beat up instead of her. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we're excited, man. It'll be awesome. So when you revealed, like, obviously there's pink confetti there. Was that primarily for the kids? Like, did, or just did, or was it a surprise for you too? No, no. We just we've, – we've not had a gender reveal uh, big thing. We just kind of go to the hospital yeah. and they go, girl, okay. Awesome. Great. Well, that's fun for them. See, the crazy part is when we got to the fourth, we opted not to find out. We didn't know until the baby was born. Oh, wow. And that was pretty wild. I couldn't do that one. I, yeah, I wanna, we, we I had wanna, one of each. I want to so personalize like, the name leading up to it. We don't have a name picked out, which, fun fact, when Whitney and I were engaged, Ooh. we had picked out two names of future kids, Venna and Tate. So we I don't think, have a name sitting there. I think like BYU Sports Nation should name the baby. I think it should be Dennis <laughs> as a girl. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, BYU Sports Nation, submit your names for uh, Jerem's new baby girl. I'm, ex way. I'm excited to not use many of these, <laughs> if any of these. All rise and shout. For that and much more, it's time for What's Trending. It's a ranked versus ranked matchup in the Big 12. All three for Dallin Hall. Showtime for war. What's Trending presented by Tim Daly Nissan, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group serving Utah since 1968. It's Hilton versus Marriott, but it's at Hilton tonight. BYU at number six, Iowa State. The Cougars just pulled off a road top 10 win in historic Fog Allen Fieldhouse. It's a lot to ask BYU to go and do this again in back-to-back -back weeks. Do it again. Let's go. <laughs> Why not? So what is the roadmap to replicating what was just an iconic win last week and beating Iowa State for a second time this season and sweeping the Cyclones. I would assume it's like I-70 or 80 East initially, but you look at Iowa State, they're so good, dude. Number eight in net, number two defensive efficiency team in the country. Uh, by the way, BYU's 87 points in Provo, still the most allowed by Iowa State all year. 15-point uh, win is the largest loss by Iowa State this year. So BYU got them early when they, they've gotten even better, right? Cougar stats with two good points here. Iowa State gives up the ninth highest ratio of threes yes. taken per game defensively. Yes. Threes will be available. BYU, for whatever reason, as good as the defense is for Iowa State, they allow three-point field goals. Yeah. Now, they don't always go in. Like, they're a good defense. They don't allow a ton of points, so they must contest those shots well. Okay. BYU did go 13 of 35 in Provo. I was going to say they made if, 13. If BYU can get to that number tonight in both, I, they have They're a gonna, good shot. They might win again. They might win. And then the other thing is you got to take care of the ball. Second highest turnover rate in the country defensively for Iowa State. They turn you over. BYU only turned it over 16% of the time at home in that win. Second lowest percentage uh, Iowa State has uh, allowed all year. I guess second worst in that regard. So, tornado pun here. Weather's a storm. Like you did against Kansas. BYU was down 12. They came back. They were down 17 at halftime. They came back. I don't want to see how far this can go per se. Like, if BYU can avoid any kind of big deficit, that'd be great. But what a big game, Spence. Top 15 matchup in net, top 20 in AP poll. If BYU wins this, like, they could be a four seed in Lenardi suddenly. BYU won this game by 15 and played really well. This is this is the best win of the year, is it not? By net. I mean, perception is Kansas. We'll talk about this in a second, Spence. But 
That to me, that's the roadmap. You gotta you gotta make threes. You gotta take care of the basketball. Those are things that you would like to do every sure. game, but especially against Iowa State, who is allowing threes and turning you over. They're gonna get after it. Speaking of Iowa State, like they are super physical. Yeah, I, I feel like BYU cannot get down by double digits in tonight's game. I know that BYU erased a 12-point deficit at Kansas. That was wild. They just overcame a 17-point halftime deficit against TCU, but that was in Provo. I feel like if BYU gets down by double figures, especially early, at Hilton, they're in big trouble. What's early? First 10? Yes. First half? Like, I, I just feel like they, they can't afford to do that in a place that is as tough as that to play. It, the, their fans, we've joked about it. their fans are, I've been following this on social media, just like watching what Iowa State fans are saying in preparation for this game. They are seriously, they are out for blood tonight. Because they, uh, they got beat up. Embarrassed in Provo. In Provo. Yeah, hey, headband dude, gotcha. Weren't they down Richie by Saunders as many gotcha. as 20? They were down by, that many. I think they were down by 20. And bro, that doesn't happen to Iowa State. They were number 24 at the time, so they were like, interesting, that was a really good win, but look, Look, number six. They are <laughs> wow. and the legitimate top ten team. Iowa State feels like they still have an outside shot at getting a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. They feel like You're a hey, two, so why if not? we went out here and then we go and win in Kansas City and we win the conference tournament championship, like maybe we, maybe if Iowa State ties Houston in the regular season and then they win the tournament championship, they feel like they deserve the number one seed. So there, and it's senior night. They still have a shot. There's a ton oh, yeah. to play for. This is for the uh, Cyclones. This is the Lions Den, but maybe BYU's Daniel. This is Gonzaga on senior night, but better. This is this is. We all talked about the kennel, like, oh man, it's so tough to win up there. It's this is another level, but better. Wow. Yeah. The, this this is tougher to win in than the kennel, which BYU did on a couple of senior nights. So don't get down by double figures. Um, I feel like it's almost like uh, an alligator jaw or crocodile jaw. Like if you get double figures, like you're not getting out of that. Like it, it's over. Well, we thought that last week too. <sighs> well, at home though, like I didn't like at, but Kansas, at Kansas. At Kansas, yeah. I was like, ooh, it's gonna be tough. You're down 12 in the second half. And the hope is that that other team doesn't make any threes or free throws. Iowa State defends a lot better than Kansas, and Kansas is an okay is a pretty good defensive team. Iowa State is an elite defensive team, and I feel like they have a better home court advantage. BYU making 13 threes at home was monumental, and it was a better percentage. And they missed kind of a, a, a handful of threes at the end. Like, yeah. But they got red hot. They had that burst ability. If BYU makes even 10 tonight, Jerem, I like, I like where they could potentially be. If they can make 10 threes on the road and shoot 32%, those numbers, those numbers, or 11. Like my, my magic number tonight for BYU is 11 threes. You make 11 and it's better than 32%, they're going to have a great shot. BYU has made double-digit threes in three road games this year. Texas Tech made 13. At West Virginia made 13. At Kansas made 13. In all of those, BYU got up 39, 36, 34 threes. You got to get in that, that you range. You won two of those three. You had a 17-point lead in the other, which dwindled. Yeah. At Baylor, you only make nine. At UCF, you make nine, but you squeeze out a win. At Oklahoma, you make eight, you lose big. At Oklahoma State, you make eight, you lose big. At Utah, you only make seven, you lose close. At Kansas State, you, you make six, uh, you lose by ten. Ten is the minimum so for you, BYU to, to be in this game. I think yeah. ele- 11 might be the magic number tonight for the Cougars. Depends, too, how many times BYU gets to the free throw line. Like, if... If the threes are going and you're getting to the line, hey, that's a recipe to win. They got they got to the stripe a lot against Iowa State. I believe 20 of 24. In some games, I'm, I'm looking at BYU where if the three's not going down, it's like, well, what else are you doing? Like, are you only in, like, live and die by the three? It's like, there are other ways to score. You, you don't have to just jack up threes. Anyone can just jack up threes. But BYU is really good, obviously, at, at making and taking. Uh, you, you have five, four and a half guys at a time that can shoot the three. When Ali is on the floor, you have five. When Foos is on the floor, you have one-on-ones with yeah. Foos. So let's see if BYU can't pull off another one, dude. If BYU pulls this off, it's pretty interesting, which brings us to topic two, bro. Would a win at Iowa State be better than the win at Kansas? Statistically speaking, and looking at the metrics, yes. This would be a better win. Iowa State is a better team than Kansas this season. And I know that they both – Till last week had undefeated home records. BYU took care of that at the Fog. What if BYU knocks off both undefeated? Jim, we're talking about BYU being a four seed in the NCAA tournament then. Yes, they would be a four suddenly. In the that, that quality of a win in Ames. And there's a reason that BYU is given 
a 20% chance. It's the smallest chance that BYU has been given in any game this season. It's not close. 20% chance to win at Iowa State. Ken Palm has BYU as a 33% chance, and I think a five or a six-point underdog. I checked yesterday. It was five. It might be six today. We'll see. But regardless, BYU is the clear underdog. We're talking about a top-10 net team, the number six team in the AP poll, and the second-place team in the Big 12. BYU, until last night in Kansas's win, was tied with Kansas. Clearly, there's no debate. This would be... By the metrics, look at that note. a better win. Look at that note in yellow, by the way. BYU's a combined 2-0 against Iowa State and Kansas. That is unbelievable. <laughs> Let's make it 3-0. Not, so not only would, yeah, by the metrics, it be a better win, but yeah. what this could potentially propel BYU to do, not just in the Big 12 tournament, but uh, like I said, I, I think this this is the type of win that bumps you up a seed line in Lenardi's bracketology. It should. You're, it's a two seed right now. It's it's six in the rankings. Because now there's nothing net. fluky about winning at Kansas. It's like, oh, man, BYU won at Kansas and at Iowa State. And more importantly, BYU's hot at the end of the year. You would have road win. Your last two road games are at Kansas, Iowa State, and you win. Jerem, who would have a better win in conference than BYU? Kansas, if they win at Houston on Saturday. That, that's the only way. Yeah, that would be the best one. Uh, BYU has one of the best ones. I would argue any win against Houston right now is uh, better than BYU's win at Kansas just because of how many games Kansas but has lost Iowa in State? the league. But if BYU wins at Iowa State, pretty good. So, yeah, has anyone beaten Houston in the Fertitta Center? I can't recall. No, whether they're undefeated at home. They're undefeated as well. Yes. Everybody undefeated until BYU shows up, I guess. Um, <laughs> Yeah, b- big time win. BYU's got the confidence and ability to do this. Now, if BYU, let's say BYU doesn't show up tonight and they lose by uh, 14 or whatever. Not a big deal. You're not supposed to win there anyway. No. Um, beat Oklahoma State, you move on to Kansas City and you're good. But what if BYU wins this? Like you said, yes, it's a better win. The perception is not that it's a better win, though. Like it won't lead Sports Center or be the second thing like it was last week because Kansas has the program prestige and yes. the tradition. It won't yes. do. It won't have the national splash if BYU wins tonight, but that doesn't matter as much as what the NCAA Tournament yeah. Selection Committee thinks. Sure, and it's I fun to have the spotlight, yeah, but Iowa what State the committee have... thinks is a bigger deal yeah. on Selection Sunday. They don't have all the crazy streaks that BYU broke that Kansas had rolling. Like, they had won 82 straight games. When leading when at halftime. Had, yeah, and they had won 63 games in a row against not unranked opponents Those at are home fun. And... I don't really care. Like, what I look as much as Aiden Nip. Now they, I know. Now they would drop just a touch, but and BYU would continue to go up. But they, this like would ensure that BYU at least if BYU wins tonight, they are no worse than a five, and probably a four. And guess what? They have a shot at the four seed in that double bye, like we talked about yesterday. So that would be big time. Hopefully BYU can uh, make threes, defend well. Listen, they're going to have to overcome amazing defense. BYU's got to to out offense. The amazing defense. It's going to be a fun battle to watch. And can BYU defend at the level they did in Provo as well? Let's go. BYU's had big wins this year. Keep it going. Look at these big wins. Four different ranked teams. Four different teams in the net that are top 20 at the moment. This is this No regular season team has done that. That We've never put up that graphic. In 1984, BYU Sports Nation. Oh, wait, it didn't exist. They would not have put that graphic up because they could not. Sure. This is one of the greatest regular season BYU teams ever. Will it be one of the best BYU teams overall ever? The NCAA tournament will decide that. Wild opportunity for BYU tonight. If you beat Iowa State, then you are on a fast track for a double bye in Kansas City. Like you, More than likely, you are going you to be 11-7 and seven and... Now, like, legitimize that you will be the four seed. If Texas then, Tech then you loses become, to Baylor Then you become Saturday. huge Baylor fans on Saturday. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right? I, you want Baylor to be the three and push Texas Tech Frankly, down? Frankly, you're, you're all BYU. You're all Baylor ball. fans on Saturday regardless of what happens tonight against BYU. If you want BYU and Texas Tech to match up in Kansas City or be in that, that side of the bracket, you are rooting super hard for Baylor on Saturday. Uh, cannot wait for tonight's game. And just another opportunity. Like this, this is it beats this Clay is the Big Twelve. Like, think about who BYU has faced in the last five games, including tonight. Okay, so you beat Baylor at home. You go on the road and lose at Kansas State. Then you win at Kansas. Then you beat TCU, and now you get to go to Iowa State. This specific, <laughs> said no one. Our question of the day: If BYU wins tonight against sixth-ranked Iowa State, would that be a better win? 
then the win at Kansas. What say ye people? At Andrew Streeter underscore on X says, yes, it's hard to sweep in a season, let alone on the road, let alone against a top 10 team. Here's the thing, though. Uh, and I would say the same thing of like 2009 BYU football versus Oklahoma and 1990 BYU versus Miami. We forget that BYU was also like the 20th best team in the country in both of those games. The Cougars can hang. Will they show up tonight and will they make enough threes? They certainly can, but will they? I'm excited to watch. It's funny, yeah, and, and you talk about the prestige and just the nostalgia and how much history Kansas has. That all, for all of those reasons and all the streaks that BYU broke, and it was unexpected. It was coming off a loss to Kansas State. Like they're just unfortunately, BYU's not doing your bounce back theory thing tonight. There was so I know, like if they BYU had lost against TCU, would be like, oh, they're going to show up tonight might. for sure. Hey, we'll see, we'll see what happens. <laughs> but people will always circle that as just a special win. Like it kind of reminds me of uh, on, on the football side, BYU won at Tennessee. Tennessee was a good team that year. They went eight and five, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, road but, win versus eight win team is big time. But BYU Never has won. had much better wins in the recent past than than that win but at Tennessee, but it was Rocky Top. It's Rocky Top and Checker. It's the SEC. It's oh, Peyton Manning. That, like, people are like, that was incredible. Yeah, it's – Right? Yeah, it, it's all that. I mean, but BYU's had, by the numbers, several better wins than that in the last five years. Yeah. They're just not as history rich. Um, and that's okay. Like, that, that's totally okay. Um, Iowa State – presents just a wild challenge. Daniel Ornsby on X says, in terms of ranking and strength of schedule, yes, it would be a better win. In terms of environment, no. No one can deny Kansas is having a down year. <laughs> Which How would it be to have a down year? They're three seed, by the way, in Lenardi. I, I feel you, but they're three seeds. So, you're yeah. a top 15 team, and you're still projecting as a three seed. It's but a you're down expected year. to be top five. Yeah. Gosh. Exactly. Iowa State is ahead of them in most categories. So in that aspect, yes, Iowa State would be a better win, but the environment in Kansas will always be better. Yeah. What? Well, that's, call, that's tough because Kansas and Duke, it's like Kansas and Duke and then everybody else in terms of environment. Here's how I know it's not as big of a deal. You ain't flying out for this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to Ames. <laughs> You're not going to Ames, no. <laughs> I thought about it for a second, and I was like, nope, way too difficult. Way too difficult. You're busy tomorrow afternoon, bro. It's true. That's I got a triple ball, header of softball starting tomorrow. Hashtag BYUS on an X Facebook and Instagram to join that conversation. Which win would be better, Kansas or Iowa State, if... BYU can pull off another upset tonight. All of this just to play Gonzaga in the NCAA tournament. It's crazy. Oh, uh, number 20, I kid. Number 20, BYU plays at number 6, Iowa State tonight. Not sure if you heard about this. It's a uh, small contest of intercollegiate men's basketball. <laughs> 8 Eastern, BYU Radio, free game. Let's go. Up next, BYU Radio Analyst Mark Durant will further preview the matchup between the Cyclones and Cougars. Does he think a potential victory tonight would top the win against Kansas? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is sponsored by the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Shoots the three, scores oh! the three! Make something happen, here's Jackson. Gets right to the rim! Yes! The score! Yeah, nice job, just take it in, little 10-foot runner. Two on one, he it up to Foose. Oh! We are live at Studio B. This is your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation rolling midweek as the Cougars get set to take on Iowa State. Uh, before we get to our prestigious guest, I, I need to mention something I saw from an Iowa State fan yesterday who said we need to get Melvin Ejim in the building and right behind the BYU bench. If <laughs> Do you remember what happened at the end of the game with Iowa State when they visited Provo in 2014 and he fouled out? <laughs> No. No, what happened? Well, let's just in say he, he, he sent a signal to The Rock. Did he think The Rock was number one? He did, indeed. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, and wanted to show it with both hands. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> Double number one. I really think you're number one. Iowa State fans are all in on that. Okay. Hey, it's not, it's not like, uh, you know, Byron Rex and uh, McKelly Wesley haven't done the same to Hawaii and Utah State, respectively. So, just and saying. In the spirit of competition. Just saying. <laughs> Kansas women's basketball had a little friendly thing. Yeah, it happens. It, happens. it does happen. But let's clean it up a little bit with the always entertaining no, Mark Durant. No, this guy's likely to go do that to some opposing I, fan base never, at some point. Never. I would never do that <laughs> ever, ever. <laughs> Uh, Mark, it's good to see you again uh, as BYU gets set for a top 20 showdown in Ames. You've been to Hilton. You know what that place is about. You know that, how much that environment and that community loves Iowa State basketball. 
What kind of challenge are we talking about for BYU tonight when they take on the Cyclones? Yeah, I uh, before obviously this year going to see these Big 12 schools, I mean, Iowa State, that game that we went out there to do, uh, I think that was one of the top five difficult places to play of all the places I've been to. And I don't know that that's changed. I mean, I think it's uh, we put Kansas in there, obviously, and there's some great environments in the Big 12, but Iowa State, that's pretty tough. And and obviously, the the environment's tough, but they've always had really good teams, and this team may be one of their best. And so that environment with this level of, uh, of athleticism and ability on this team, it's going to be a, a super big challenge for the Cougars. But I tell you what, Jeremy Spencer, I've – I'm tired of underestimating these guys. I've I've done it for too long. I'm I'm on board now. I, I'm I'm just going to believe that they can win and that they can compete at, at this level and against teams like Iowa State on the road. They've shown me they can do it. They've had a great year. They they have really really good players and a real good team unity and uh, and they play they play hard. And so I'm gonna. I'm just going to say, you know, why not? Why not have this team do it? They, they've shown me all year long that they're a great basketball team and, and great basketball teams uh, win games like this and win games at Kansas and and do well in the Big 12. And, and so I expect that from this team now. I'm not going to sell them short anymore. It's not crazy to think a 20th ranked number, what is BYU today, 14 in net, uh, five seed can win at Iowa State. It's not even conceivable, right? Yet, BYU kind of operates better when no one thinks they can do it. Um, so I'm just going to say, hey, they can't do it, and then see what happens. No, I'm excited for this game because it's a late opportunity to really pad the resume and get an amazing win. Honestly, this would be the best win of the season if BYU gets it. It'd be better than even winning at Kansas, although the perception is that the Kansas win is better. Yeah, I, in Kansas, Greg and I went out to lunch, and he found a place that had some poutine. and uh, Classic. You know, the Canadian in him was craving it. And, He's one of uh, us now, though. <laughs> so, I mean, wins at Kansas, wins at Iowa State is is the gravy on the fries, I guess. And uh, they don't need this win necessarily. Um, but, man, what a huge win it would be. And Kansas was a, a huge win. I think, you know, you were talking about which wins better. I think basketball-wise, this would probably be a better win. I just think Iowa State's a little – more balanced and is a better team by a little bit over Kansas. But that Kansas win was special, obviously, just because of the history and the environment and first chance ever going there and to get that win was pretty remarkable. But I think that gives them confidence going into Iowa State. You know, this is a team they handled quite easily in the Marriott Center. Um, so they should have some confidence there as well. It will probably come down like it mostly does for this team that they have to shoot the ball well from the three-point line. They can't expect to beat the Cyclones if they're shooting in the 20s from three. It's just not going to happen. So they'll have to have a good night from three. But uh, I don't think this team is overwhelmed by any situation. They perform very well on the road. Even in the games they've lost, they've come out and played well. So I expect them to compete and be in the game, but it's certainly going to be a challenge. Mark Durant's with us on BYU Sports Nation. The Cougars made 13 threes against Iowa State in that victory in Provo. And this is a Cyclone squad that is susceptible to give up some open looks from beyond the arc. They, they kind of just surrender it by the nature of, of how they play and, and their rotations. So the opportunity should be there for BYU. I know the magic number has typically been make 10 threes and have that percentage be over 32 but you're facing number six on the road. So does BYU need an uptick from those two numbers to really push the mark here? Yeah, well, I think they at least need to be around those numbers. Um, one of the things I liked in the first meeting was that, you know, BYU sh made three times as many threes and shot over twice as many as Iowa State. But one of the things that they did well was really attack the basket and got to the free throw line. They were right with Iowa State in free throw attempts and makes. Uh, and, and so you're not going to shoot as well, probably on the road from three. So you have to be very aggressive at the rim, get to the free throw line, because if you're not really taking a, a big advantage of the three point shot and you're also trailing in free throws, I mean, where, where are you going to get your points? So, 
I think the BYU needs to be aggressive, not totally reliant on the three, take it to the rim, get to the free throw line, and then they're gonna have to they're gonna have to be at least decent from the three. I mean, we're not talking about Pepperdine and and Santa Clara and all due respect to those teams and they beat us plenty of times, but th you cannot have any letdown in any area of your game and expect to win on the road at Iowa State. You mentioned free throws. BYU was 20 of 24 against Iowa State. They led by 24 with 210 left. It required a 9-0 run for Iowa State just to get it down to 15. I mean, that was uh, one of the greatest, if not the best, performance of the year against number eight in net. And Mark, by the way, we've seen BYU beat four different ranked teams this year. It had never, it never been more than two different ranked teams in a season. Now this team's got four. Resume's looking good. Like you said, this team doesn't need this win, but man, it would be pretty good going into Oklahoma State. Needs some revenge, and then Kansas City next week is perhaps the biggest conference tournament BYU's ever played in. Yeah, I mean, it's a different world now. Just to be able to play that many quality teams was rare. It just didn't happen before you were in the Big 12. So it's a great opportunity, and BYU's taken advantage of the opportunities and played well. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the whole world is before BYU right now. They'll have some great opportunities to get this win tonight on, on the weekend, obviously, in, in the Big 12 tournament, and then the NCAA tournament. I mean, this may be the most – exciting month BYU's had since at least the Jimmer era and uh, I'm I'm here for it I'm excited for it and like I said before this team I think is is up to the task uh now it, it, you know it it could go very wrongly but what you want at this point in the season Jerem is to be playing good basketball and I think BYU is doing that um they've had a, a few bumps here and there but they're healthy I mean you mentioned the Iowa State game Trevin Nell didn't play in that game um, so they're they're healthy, and uh, I think confident. And uh, you want you just want that. You want to be playing your best basketball at this time of the year to put yourself in the best position uh, to do some special things. And I think they're there for that. So we'll see how it transpires and lays out for the Cougars. But uh, I'm I'm really really excited for this month. Yeah, certainly March basketball is very very. Uh, importantly looking at matchups when you talk about potential to advance. And again, Mark, as you just mentioned, like we're not sure how it's going to lay out in the Big 12 tournament, but typically when BYU's gotten to the NCAA tournament and they've made a little bit of a run, they've benefited from some matchups. Last time BYU went to a Sweet 16, they were a three seed. They beat a 14, and then they beat the 11 seed Gonzaga. Like that stuff matters. So right now BYU projecting is a five seed. And I asked this question to Jonathan Tavernari yesterday. Mark Pope's never won an NCAA tournament game, and it's been so good in the Big 12 this year that we all kind, kind of can't help thinking, like, maybe this team's built for another Sweet 16 run. But if they just win one game in the tournament, Mark, do you feel like that's enough to say, like, hey, the monkey's off the back, and, and now BYU and Mark Pope are, like, they, they won a tournament game? Like, is, is it fair to say that, that that pressure would then be gone if they just get to the second round? Yeah, I think I think there's pressure to win that first one, especially if they get a, a good seed. I mean, that's really been the problem for our, as long as I can remember. When BYU gets in the tournament, is they're usually no better than a you know seven, eight, nine, ten to twelve seed. And and one of the great things about the Big Twelve is you you've been through a gauntlet of tournament teams, and a lot of times BYU will get to the tournament and face a team from a power five conference and you can just tell how much better athletically and, and BYU's a little been a little bit overwhelmed at times because they're not used to it. They're going to be used there. There's not going to be any team they face in the tournament that they haven't seen that type of athleticism and, and haven't competed against and done well against. So I think a better seed and then not being surprised by how athletic and, and quick and good some teams are. Uh, I, I expect BYU to, to win a tournament game. So there's pressure because there's expectation. And then after that, I mean, again, it's it's the poutine. It's the gravy after that. Yeah. I think BYU could go all the way. But uh, uh, there's just so many things that could happen. I just want them to play well and, and to do well, and, and we'll see what happens. But I do think there is pressure on that first one just because they've had such a great season. They'll get – a decent seed and so that always puts pressure on you but I don't think this team 
mine's much pressure. I mean, if you can go into Kansas and win, you, Man. you, you can handle pressure pretty well. Mm-hmm. well it'll be thick tonight, but uh, to your point, Mark, this, this team has shown resilience and <laughs> mental fortitude in so many of these tough environments. Can't wait to watch tonight. We appreciate you spending some time with us and can't wait to see you again, including on Saturday when BYU has their senior night against Oklahoma State. Yeah, I'm excited for Saturday. That'll be a big one, and mostly because I get to see Spencer. Jerem doesn't come to hang out with me, but I, I get to see Spencer, <laughs> Sorry, and that man. makes me happy. Yeah. Sorry, Mark. I appreciate that. Hey, I hop after the game. We'll, we'll figure something out, okay? Just like Lawrence. Let's go. Did you guys Listen, go to IHOP? If I, if, <laughs> nice. <laughs> See what you're missing out on, Jerem? I know. Come on, man. I know. It's basically the only thing open in Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Great to talk to you, man. See you guys. Mark Durant, always fabulous on BYU Sports Nation. To his point, by the way, uh, BYU is 6-3 and three versus tournament teams right wow. now. Bracketology. Uh, Six wins. N- need we say more? Not bad. In fact, good. BYU Basketball with Mark Pope. The season finale tomorrow night, 8.30 Eastern time on the BYU TV app. And up next, can we call this vengeance for Lauren Gustin with her first team nod in the Big 12? Plus, a former BYU coach upset some San Diego State folk. (laughs) And then an awesome BYU quarterback card collection all in the whip. This is BYU Sports Nation. Seriously. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Follow BYU Sports Nation on social. We're on Facebook, X, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Welcome back to the studio, Bizzle. I am Spencer. He is Jerem. Let's get to today's headlines. Hey, I'm I'm happy to die on that mountain. (laughs) It's more of a hill. Number 20 men's basketball plays at number 6 Iowa State tonight. Pre-game 8 Eastern on BYU Radio. Cougars won the first game 87-72 in Provo. Both teams top 15 in net. Bracket matrix update for the Cougs. BYU in all 125 brackets. Who knew there were that many? Apparently, our mothers also produce brackets. Uh, high seed of four, low seed of six. Average seed is 4.87. Wow. Tonight, BYU wins. They might be on the four line for a bunch, bunch of people. They would deserve it if you win at Iowa State. Yeah. On the women's basketball side, BYU's Lauren Gustin and Kaylee Wilson named to the all Big 12 teams yesterday. Gustin on the first team after averaging 17.3 points and 15.4 rebounds a game. It's your player of the year numbers. Get that in a moment. Wilson, an honorable mention after she scored 13.4 points per game and shot a Big 12 best 45.6% from the three-point line. Wow, that's number three in the country. Gustin Wilson and BYU will play a peaking and surging Kansas team in Kansas City when Big 12 tournament play opens for BYU on Friday. Baseball's won four in a row now, 6-4 dub at UNLV. Dave McCann on the call, not conflicted though, as the former voice of UNLV football. Last night, thanks to Luke Anderson's two for four home run performance. Is his karma run not one of the greatest ever? It's pretty good. Easton Jones also had three hits, three ribbies. Six and five Cougs begin Big 12 play at West Virginia tomorrow. BYU men's golf playing the final round at the Lampkin Invitational in San Diego yesterday. They finished 10th overall as a team, the score of two under par. The Cougars led by top 25 finishes from Zach Jones. He's going to be on the PGA Tour, I'm telling you. He tied for 19th at three under par. And Keanu Aquina, who finished tied for 23rd at two under par. Congrats to those gentlemen. Cougar Pro Hooper's weekly update. Yoli Child back-to-back 19.10 board double-doubles in two games this week for the Saga Ballooners in Japan. Zach Selyus and his mullet had 21 points, nine boards for Würzburg Baskets in Germany. Alex Barcelo had 10.6 boards for Guk Gipuzka in Spain. That doesn't sound Spanish at all. And Brand- Is that a company? And Brandon Davies scored 11 for Valencia Basket Club yes. in Spain. That's, that's a proper Spanish club. Come on. I love that we just... Gook! You have have to say it a certain way. (laughs) Wolfsburg Boskins! Hey, Daniel Schneeman played for the Cleveland Guardians. He's a triple-A guy in their uh, association. In spring training yesterday, he recorded a walk. Good luck to Daniel as he continues the pursuit of getting to the major leagues. My mom lives right next to the Guardians facility. That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty pretty fun to go down there and watch games. Not this year, though. It's a little busy. Uh, It's it's busy, for sure. For good reason. Those are today's headlines. Uh, Now we get to a quick Big 12 roundup. Last night's games, Jerem, I mean, 
everything matters. There was all, only one that was entertaining. We're all scoreboard yeah. watching because of what it means potentially for BYU. Okay, Kansas beat Kansas State, blew them out 96 to 8, Hunter Dickinson 15 and 20, five blocks. He didn't walk through anyone's huddle, I don't think though. Texas Tech beat Oklahoma State by 17, Red Raiders held the Cowboys to 17 first half points. Pop Isaacs, Darian Williams, 37 points for the Red Raiders. Oklahoma beat Cincinnati in OT. We were rooting for the Bearcats in that one because Oklahoma has the tiebreak against BYU. The Trey Darthard, former Utah Valley player, scored a season high 18 in the win. A couple of former Utah Valley players in that game, one for Oklahoma and one for Cincinnati. Interesting. That's right. Tonight's game's number one ranked Houston at UCF. UCF has a tendency of uh, beating some big time teams on their home floor, but it, it's Houston. That's Come so. On. Come on. Come on. It's it's <laughs> it's Houston. Houston's won seven straight in this conference. They won the first matchup against uh, the Knights this season. Cougars favored by eight and a half points on the road. And TCU at West Virginia. TCU eight and eight in the Big 12 after their loss to BYU. West Virginia four and 12. Both teams come into the game in a little bit of a slump. The Horned Frogs have lost three of their last four. West Virginia has lost seven of the last eight. And TCU is a road favorite by five and a half. That wraps up the Big 12 roundup. Yeehaw! Now we whip it! Cougar Whip Round presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Should Lauren Gustin have been considered for player of the year despite BYU's 6-12 record in the Big 12? BYU just needed to be in the top half of conference for that to get some more buzz. Like, you can't, typically you gotta finish like in the top four to like really be nominated for player of the year. It's unfortunate because her numbers, like if BYU were a top four team, she might be the player of the year. Like straight up. Madison Booker was yeah. incredible for Texas as a freshman. Skyler Van for Oklahoma. Those are great players. They're co-players of the year. If BYU is a better team and they're a top four team, I think Lauren Gusson might be the player of the year. Yeah, you can't be the 10 seed and be the player of the year. But Lauren's numbers were incredible, and now BYU's got something to prove uh, in the Big 12 tournament coming up this week, man. They play in two days. They wanted Kansas. They got Kansas. Huge task. Richie Saunders. I love this from John Rothstein made the list of top 10 glue guys from Rothstein in the country. Here's what uh, Rothstein said specifically about Richie, quote, have you ever had someone that made you want to do a push-up on a picket fence? <laughs> I don't understand that. Is it sideways? Is it the top where it's all pointy and stuff? Like, what are we talking that's about? That's the here? way I feel when I watch Saunders play, a versatile piece who refuses to be outworked. The 6'5 Saunders often outwills the opponent with the, which, with the biggest weapon that he has, his heart. Uh -huh. Is that an accurate description of how Richie Saunders plays? Oh, yeah. No one's got more juice, more energy, more fight, more effort. Yeah, Richie's the best, man. He typically does, like, one, if not at least two things a game where I'm just like, oh, my gosh. Like, Out just, of sheer just effort. Force of hustle, will. Hustle, yes. yes. It's like, he is very, he's more skilled than he gets credit for, but the effort is unbelievable. San Diego Tribune writer Mark Ziegler tweeted the following last night. Oh. FYI, the ref who just teed up Brian Dutcher is Mike Littlewood, the former BYU baseball coach. Given San Diego State's history with BYU and questionable officiating decisions, remember Fumblegate, why in the world would he be assigned to a San Diego State game? And this is his fifth game of the season. Did Mike do Cougar Nation a solid? Yes, Mike did Cougar Nation a solid, and this is a reputable writer here. Mark, go get your tinfoil hat, buddy. Like, stop it. The integrity of Mike Littlewood is in question here as a former BYU baseball coach, so he's purposely punishing the Aztecs. This is one of the most ridiculous takes ever in the history of this show, and there have been some bad ones, okay? This is ridiculous. Mike's a great official. He's he an was, incredible he official. He was offered an NBA job. He turned it down so he could keep coaching baseball at the time. He's like the only guy that has really done that right at the time. He was the only guy. He's done Elite Eights. Bunch of NCAA tournaments. He's a great ref. Yes. Come on. Mark's a come great on. writer. Oh, you're a good writer. Like, they, come on. The, the conspiracy theory with this is that's a stretch to say the least. A BYU fan. As we move now to something that is just ultra impressive to me. Rick Banovich. He posted a photo of his BYU quarterback card collection this as we great. get into spring football. Jeremy, there are some random, awesome cards <laughs> in this collection. Yes, there are. Including. Ammon Olsen. Uh, just wild. What's the most impressive card to you? Drew Miller. You have a Drew Miller card? Who at the time was like the first BYU freshman never yeah. started a game. Yes. Uh, number four, second row, uh, uh, third row from the top, second down. 
That's amazing. I like. That's a great collection. I've never seen anyone with anything like that. Super cool. cool. There's a Brett Engeman in there. The one that I love the most <laughs> is the legit card of Mike Holmgren playing quarterback for the Phoenix Cardinals. Yeah, now that's, the Arizona Cardinals. That's pretty good. That one is is unreal. He didn't play quarterback at BYU, but he was the quarterback. He has coach a Keaton Slovis card. Like, where do you even get where, a Keaton Slovis card? Yeah. And Am then, and Olsen? A like, Lavelle hey. down in the corner to round it out. Yeah, that's The quarterback good. factory. Really cool stuff from Rick. Check out the Deep Blue podcast featuring Craig Manning, who's the associate athletic director over mental strength, helped the Cavs and Bucks to NBA titles. Pretty interesting stuff with Shep on the Deep Blue podcast. Hey, what's better than one Big 12 champion in Studio B? Dose. How about two? Swimmers Jordan Tiffany and Brad Pro hey. will join us after the break. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Welcome back to BYU Sports Station. We are live in Studio B. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up with Jerem Jordan, and we've moved over to the Cougar Council Room to welcome in two Big 12 champions yeah. from BYU Swim and Dive. Swim specifically here, Jordan Tiffany and Brad Prolo. Welcome to the show, Hello, guys. guys. Good to have Hello. you back. Good, Good to have you yeah. back. Thank uh, you. Last time we chatted, you weren't uh, Big 12 champs. So what's it like to uh, win the second and third individual Big 12 titles in BYU history? Yeah, it's great. It's kind of been a, a dream the whole year. It's, it's been on my radar. That's what I wanted to do. Um, and yeah, dream come true. It's been great. Yeah, same thing as Jordan. Uh, ever since we ha we got the announcement coming to Big 12, I've always, you know, I, I, you always want to win the Big 12. So. Sure. And I knew I could do it. So. What's the competition difference been in the Big 12 conference compared to the MPSF? Because, I mean, there were still some great swimmers in the MPSF, but how has it been different in the Big 12? Uh, and that's a question for both of you. So, um, Brad, we'll start with you. So, I've been in the MPSF for a while now, and it's a, it's, there are, like you said, there are great swimmers in the MPSF, but the dynamic and the, the depth that's in the Big 12 is much different. So you have Texas, who's been a dominant force for the last, whatever, two decades, and swimming against them was, a, was something I've never done before. So it, it was kind of night and day difference yeah. in that way, just because you're swimming against so many faster people. Um, but MPSF was a good competition as well, but the Big 12 was definitely a highlight of my career. Jordan, how's it been for you against Texas and the like thereof? Yeah, it's been great. So I did my first year at Tennessee, right? And yep. I was at SECs. So You've experienced that a little bit. A little bit similar. And then last year I was redshirting. So I watched the guys at MPSF, but I didn't compete. Um, so it was nice to be back in a Power Five. It's a little bit more like the SEC rather than the MPSF. And me and Brad are racers, so we love it. We want the top dogs and we want to chase them. So it was great. Can we, because you guys won the 100 and 200 respectively, right? Uh -huh. yep. Have you raced in a 150 just to see? No, uh, we need to. Yeah, that's a good question, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Just split it in the middle? Yeah, good would it be, idea to our coaches. Would it be harder for, because you did 100, right? Right, yeah. But would it be harder for you to do 150 since he's already going 200 typically? I think it'd be a really good race. I honestly. think we'd be really close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because his, his front up. end speed is faster. I know we should. His but front end speed's faster, but I can come back. back. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Didn't track and field do this with some mega stars back in the day? Michael like Johnson. Like the difference. I, I think it was the gold medal 100 meter, and then Michael Johnson, the, the famous 200 and yes. 400. I think they did something like, like split that. Split the difference. I, yes. Uh, hey, I can, that's a good idea. Let's do it. Let's I do can it. smell the chlorine right now. I'm ready to go. Let's go. Brad Prolo and Jordan Tiffany are with us on BYU Sports Nation. Okay, after you win a Big 12 championship, like that's you know, top of the mountain in conference. It's super cool. Mm -hmm. So what's next in terms of goals for both of you? Uh, I'll go. My, my next goal is to get top eight in the nation. Um, so Nationals is coming up, NCAAs at the end of this month. My goal is to get top eight. I want that trophy. I want yeah. to get All-American, get first that trophy. First-team All-American, right? Yep, first-team yeah. All-American. That's just that's my goal. Is that make it to the final, essentially? So, yeah, so you have your prelims. You have to be top eight from the prelims and then finals it's you're kind of guaranteed that spot unless yeah. you dq but you know. yeah All right. do you feel like your times are matching up to hit that mark i think so yeah yeah from this weekend from this last week yes i i'm up there right now outstanding yeah. okay jordan what about you what's next on the goal list yeah similar to brad we're both top 10 in the nation right now um and like you said you have to get that top eight so that's something you're we right want there to do. yeah we're really close um i think we both we both expected to win big 12s we we put high expectations and we like to go after it um, so same thing as, as NCAAs, we want to go get that top eight spot and then give people a race in that final. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Uh, the Nationals are in uh, Indianapolis coming up at the end of the month, so we'll keep an eye on that, which is exciting. Okay, so um, the, the swimmers and the divers, what's that relationship like? Uh, because Mickey Strauss uh, qualified for the Olympic trials, which is pretty mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. Are you guys like, obviously you're, 
you're going to some different meets sometimes, but what, what's the relationship like with Mickey and the, the divers? It's been fun with the divers. They, since they help score points and we're on the same team, it's, it's a good relationship. But at times, they're going to their zones meet this week, so they're going to qualify for NCs. Hopefully, we'll see Mickey again at NCs again. Um, like I did last year, so it's we we love competing with each other. It's a good good deal. At practice, they're in like the other end, right? You're like, yeah, hey guys. We're yeah, we don't here. we don't practice at the same time. <laughs> they're always like an hour stagnant, like yeah. a little bit different. But yeah, we see them every every once in a while. So with Texas now leaving the Big Twelve, this becomes a different dynamic. You welcome in Arizona and Arizona State and Colorado and Utah. So, so they some, all have programs. Some new squads. Most of them, yes. Most yeah. of them do. Okay, so I, yeah. But how does the dynamic shift? Like, do you feel like, hmm, maybe there's an opportunity for us to go to go grab something now that Texas is gone? How, how do you how do you? Jordan can that? explain Jordan. this one. Yeah, we so we had a dual meet against Utah this year and we crushed them. Yes. That was fun. Oh, Love I it. remember it well. <laughs> oh, we yeah. talked about it on the show. Right on. Yeah, we'll be doing it again next year too. So watch out for that. <laughs> the um, meet or the crushing? Both. both. <laughs> um, uh, Arizona has a good program. We're pretty close with them. Um, and Arizona State coming in, they're number one in the nation right now. So Texas going out, ASU coming in, they kind of, uh, that's it's a kind wash of a wash. Right there. Okay. Yeah. But it's, it's going to be nice to have Arizona and, and Utah in there. Like we love racing Utah. It brings the best out of us. So some more teams, some more competition. Um, we're excited. Uh, we were talking about this during the break, just like <clears throat> just being a swimmer in sort of dry skin, Utah, <laughs> February, March. What, what's it like being a swimmer at BYU when uh, you're already in the water all day and then it's crazy dry outside of it? You just a lot of lotion, a lot of lotion. <laughs> Got to take good showers, lotion up, and then hopefully your skin stays that, yeah. that hydrated. It's a real-life problem. It, it, it is. is. It, it is, yeah. okay? Why did, at what point in your lives did you decide, like, okay, swimming is, is the thing for me? Like, when did, you, when did you make that decision? Brad, we'll start with you. I actually probably never made that decision. Uh, <laughs> You're still making I was, it? I moved to California, and my parents, I wasn't water safe, so they threw me in the pool, and... The coach that was there teaching me was like, you're actually pretty good. You should join the club team. And my dad's like, yeah, because he swam in high school. And he's like, yep, you're, you're doing swim. Swam all the way up until college. I did quit for a year. And then I came back because I played water polo. And I was like, mm. I'm not good at water polo. That is not my thing. I'm good at <laughs> swimming, not the water polo. If you part. like mildly drowning, yes. Yes, yeah. exactly. Now so, you're a big toe champ. Yeah. Now, yeah. Then I, I fell in love with swimming again. Now here we are. Yeah, Jordan, champ. what about you? What was, what was the decision and, and what was that timeline like? Yeah, I kind of did a bunch of different sports till I was 12 or 13. And when I was about 13, 14, I knew I could go somewhere in the sport. Um, and so, yeah, beginning of high school, end of junior high, I just went all in um, and it paid off. What would be the second sport, if you didn't swim, that you would have tried to uh, do? I would surf. You oh, would nice. Surf, like surfing. competitive surf. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I love surfing. You love Grew surfing. Grew up on the, in Southern California. You are a California all, my, all the guys I graduated with are actually in, in their pros. Wow. So. I, I would have continued surfing. Yeah, they're not Big 12 champions. Over no, no, so. so it's not as cool. They, get, they did get second in you, the WSL. So. That's pretty good. You brought up surfing and yeah. water polo. You are a California guy. Yeah, yeah I love it. Yeah. Okay. Jordan, what about you? I, I love that question. I'm an MMA guy. I love the really? UFC. Really? Yeah, I'd love to fight when I'm done swimming. We've got to have you that's talk to awesome. Andrew Mickelson. Yeah. Our you, guy. BYU has a former player, kicker who is uh, now a pro I mean, MMA yeah. fighter. Yeah. Oh, I'm in. Set me up. <laughs> oh, good. I love it. I love it. <laughs> That's great stuff. Hey, great to have you in. Thank um, you. Congratulations on all the hard work. Let's give you some karma for the uh, approaching nationals in Indianapolis. Yeah, in Indy. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. you got it. All right. Brad Prolo and Jordan Tiffany with us on BYU Sports Nation. Up next, we ask what a win tonight for BYU men's basketball at Sixth Strength Iowa State. Top last week's victory at Kansas. More responses to your question of the day after the break. This is BYUSN. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Listen, I always get to do the lead voice of the day, but to celebrate is your computer not working. No, we're, we're good. Okay. We're good. I just, just want to get, I, I feel Our like you have loved one another, so I'm like, let's just share some love with Jerem. question of the day, if BYU wins at number six, <laughs> Iowa State, so normally it's your computer not working. No, no, <laughs> all good. Would Iowa State tonight be a better win than Kansas? Uh, our elite voice of the day is presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated at Joe Brady 12 on X. Yes and no. Yes for this year's seeding. Both conference and NCAA tournaments know because of the history of Kansas. Okay. Winning at KU is so rare, that is an unmatched event. 
perception is that it'll be yes, Kansas. Yes, yes. But the reality is to the it's Iowa committee, State. It's Iowa State. It is Get Iowa State. BYU wins tonight. Go get them. Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Lauren Gustin. She wasn't on the preseason team amazingly, and then of course she's on the first team. Of course she is. She was the f- she's on the first. She didn't get honorable mention. Yeah. If there was higher than first, she'd be on that too. Holy cow. Uh, our thanks to today's guests, Mark Durant, Jordan Tiffany, and Brad Prolo. Sorry, Dennis. For Jerem, I am Spencer. Go Kooks tonight in Ames!